I'd like to call the meeting to order um, and ask for approval of uh, the minutes of the last meeting, which were, which was May 13. I assume uh, everyone has had a chance to look at them. Thank you, Liz, as yeah. always, for an excellent job. I have one comment on it there. I noticed there were some references to the uh, Friendly 40B. Mm -hmm. And in the back, in one of the appendices for the uh, housing production plan, there's quite a long description of what the process is for all of that and what the ground rules would be for oh. both for rentals and for um, home ownership and so on. And I think that the... I think for one of those, it's 25% uh, has to be capital A affordable. Um, in, order, in a friendly 40B. In a friendly 40B. So, and I don't think there's any maximum, which I think was reflected in the minutes that there might be a maximum, but I don't think there is. I took it from the meeting. Okay. So I'm just okay. letting everyone and know. It says 30% of affordable housing can't go above 80%. Yeah, I don't think there is any you don't think ceiling. That. Okay. Wait, eight, 80% BMI? No, I think no. it's I think it's 80% 80 80 of AMI, but right. but not the minutes are, are units. Are, yeah. So there's no cap on the number. So I should just say of AMI. No, not there's no cap yeah. on the number of units. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah. well I didn't that, I don't think I said right. anything about okay. units. I didn't say anything about units. Okay. But I'll, I'll just <laughs> add 80% AMI. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jan. So, uh, do we have a motion? I move to, to approve the minutes with the, with the oh, good. Jackie with the change. change with the with the, the with change, change. The recommended the, change uh, as amended. Okay. Okay. Is someone moving? Second. Who, Janet. Who who moved? <laughs> Jan. 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 Okay. Second, Mark. Yes. All those in favor? I guess we can just say aye. Because aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, um, Jan. Yes, I wanted to just give you an update on the housing production plan. Uh, uh, Karen and Michaela and I have gone through the draft. We've made a number of changes based on the discussion with the community forum here and also with the planning board members and the select board members. And I also received a, a note from Kate Fletcher from the planning board with a number of other suggestions and so on. So what I wanted to do today was just highlight there are many of the changes are not major changes, but I wanted to highlight the main ones that we're going to have in uh, this revised draft. And then to also let you know that um, I have written to, and I, I hope we can have this revised draft all done and sent to all of you and posted on the town website um, in the next week or so, so that uh, we can get further comments along the way. But I've written to Kate Fletcher and asked that we be on the agenda for the planning board meeting on July 2nd, because <clears throat> I think the, the meeting next week has been canceled and the one in the middle of June, I'm not going to be here and Karen cannot be available on that. Okay. Would that be to get final sign off? Hopefully, hopefully. What about this? And then, board? and then we would go to the select board following that. Right. Okay, with the same process. So I'll just run through the the ten main things that we change have changed in this. First of all, we put a whole list of the acronyms at the beginning of the document, so it's they're not all at the end. There's now a, a summary of them at the beginning. Uh, we are also going to list at the end in the appendix six, which talks about the results from the workshop uh, and the forum. We're going to list the participants that we have who signed in. Not everybody signed in, I don't think, but at least the people who signed in for any one of those discussions. And why are we doing that? Uh, well, it was requested that we do that, and no. is there a reason not to do it? I mean, I don't know. It's ever, did we get permission to put them in a final document, or mm -hmm. do we need to? I don't know. I, I wonder how people would feel about yeah. having their names in there when they came to a meeting and weren't asked for consent. And it seems like endorsement almost. I would. Okay. All I right. mean, that's yeah. just my take. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So we'll, we'll not do that. <laughs> okay. Um, the third one is a reference to the housing production plan, define, we're gonna define affordable, what capital A affordable housing, 
but also we're going to put in a statement that while the state's housing production plan requirements focus mostly on capital A affordable housing, most uh, housing production plans, including this one, are addressing broader housing issues that we've identified in the community. It's just a, you know, mm -hmm. a statement as well. Um, we're adding language that based on specific site conditions, resources, and environmental infrastructure constraints, the town of Stockbridge through its affordable housing trust will provide guidance on the project terms and conditions with ample opportunities for local input. Okay, we're going to acknowledge that even though the US census information in 2010 said there were 19 mobile homes, mm -hmm. there are no, there were no mobile homes according to all local people. Um, Michael, are the, are the houses at, um, at uh, the Levan property considered mobile? Because they are trailers. Uh, it's not completely clear that that feedback was actually accurate to me. Oh. Okay. Uh, at the Levan property, which we've been to, all those houses that they had lined up on the side are all mobile homes. Which they are? I believe they are, yeah. They basically have siding and they have like, you know, they're on, you know. What's the address? It's, uh, it's on Browsick Mountain and uh, Route 7. 15 East Street, I think. Okay, so we, we will check that then before yeah, we... I'll, I'll check that tomorrow. And I'm not sure there's 19 of them there, but it may be there's no, there more than zero. Uh, no. This is from 2010. Surprise, because they... I've, they look exactly like the houses at Mill River, which I visited because I wrote a statement for them. I'm just saying that they, okay, I, so they, they could be they could be mobile homes. So I'm just okay, before we say so there are none. What I, what I would suggest, other than going through all of this, is we will simply add a, a statement that it's not too big. That if the census information says there were 19, there's some question about whether there were that many. We don't believe that's that accuracy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, we aren't sure yeah. whether it's accurate. Okay. We're going to mention the Tri-Town uh, Connector as a transit resource. That was something that came up in the uh, select board meeting. And just going back for one second, are, are you guys know there aren't any any trailer style homes at uh, at the industrial park, are there? No. No. But I know. No, okay. no there's two houses in the- There's two houses, warehouse. but there's all those units in the big building and- Yeah, there's a couple of warehouses, okay. but I don't know of any. Okay. Uh, I, I, do, I do have We're going to remove uh, the summary the summary provisions for the draft ADU bylaw. Oh, would, would you go back to the Tritown connector thing? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're just going to add a reference that there, there is now a Tritown connector as a transit resource for residents. That was not in the original draft. Thank you. Um, we're going to remove the summary provisions for the draft ADU because there'll probably be another one. It wasn't passed, so yeah, yeah. there'll probably be another one anyway. It hasn't passed yet. And we're going to change the language uh, so that the town, instead of saying should require a developer to meet with, you know, to develop early plans and meet with abutters. We're changing that language to the town will require the developer to meet with them. Okay. Those are the main ones. Um, and so you can look for that draft out in the next week, hopefully. And then if you have any further ones, you can let me know, but we're gonna go ahead and send it to the planning board members and probably the select board members, and we'll need to get a uh, time mm -hmm. to be on the agenda for the select board. Yeah, Hopefully, talk to Michael and Chuck or whoever's okay. the chair after the reorganization of the. Okay. Yeah. Like right. well, nothing. Any, anything else? No, that's it. Questions? Thank you, Jan. Jan. Okay. Jan's put in a tremendous amount, of and so and so is Michaela. And, and Not as much as you, Jan. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Um, anyway, thank you both. Uh, it's, it, I know we're not there yet, but uh, <clears throat> that's a major step forward. Patrick, can you give us a quick? Um, Absolutely quick. It is, uh, so the, uh, the former city manager, I believe, of Worcester, who's now the secretary of, of uh, housing and advanced living or something, I forget what his title is, 
um, for the state. He's, just, he's a cabinet secretary. Uh, came out to Stockbridge and visited us at Court and did his, you know, kind of dog and pony show with uh, with a uh, 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 discussion of what the Heaton Court sense of needs were. It was open to the public, uh, mostly Heaton Court residents from Andrew did a great job, and it was, um, you know, it was it was good. He he talked about um, ADUs for all. Uh, I pointed out my opinion, which I don't believe is necessarily anyone else's, that we shouldn't allow uh, two short term rentals on one ADU that it could actually blow up the local housing market. Um, and uh, and uh, I'm sorry, one parcel with an ADU. Uh, so similar to what Lee just passed, I I referenced that and uh, and uh, pointed out to him that that. In resort communities, especially, I felt that uh, that it's in, in in none of the residents' interest to allow for, you know, two rental, two short-term rental units on one property, and uh, that was basically. Did he give you any response? In his opinion. I don't think he. I I don't think they had really focused on. I mean, yeah, you know, they're they're dealing with you know seven million residents, and you know the needs of resort communities are relatively small. But the point was made, and and then we made it yeah. often. I think. Uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. And didn't Liz, didn't you go and Patrick, I don't know whether you also went because he went up to Yes, BCC. Yes, we were both at we BCC. Were, we went together. Right. And is there right. anything? Uh, I think it was a I think it was four breakouts. Uh it was a brief presentation, four breakouts. Um uh mine was great. Uh, I was in with uh, uh Carolyn Valley of uh Habitat for Humanity, a bunch of other folks, the mm -hmm. CEO of Greylock Bank, <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, Jamie was there too, uh, and as were other candidates uh, on the the race that we're in, um, and I heard that their session went great too. Yeah, and it was, each session had I would bet twenty twenty five people yeah. in it, and the, the mix of people was amazing, and how much we learned about what's going on in terms of housing and how to do it, and basically the challenges. They really wanted to know for a five year plan what the challenges are that we face. Mm -hmm. in in town or in in the Berkshires, and it was we were very clear, and they took very good notes. They said our turnout was the highest of any in the state so far. That's right. Wow. Our what? The turnout, the highest turnout oh, in the, the state. So far. that's great. Yeah, it was. It was. I'm so glad. And did he talk about what they were trying to do, or he was just? No, they were really looking. They're they're going around the state to find out what it is they need to do. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's it's clear there's a really big problem. Money is a big, big issue. Well, they have, I think they have money that they want to disperse. They're just trying to figure out how to do it. it, it has that, do you know, Patrick, whether that that legislation that was going, that uh, the governor proposed was to um, create a, a great big fund of money? Yeah, I think that that's still in debate in the House, isn't it? Uh, I don't believe anything's passed yet. Uh, they've got to the August 31st. Okay, thank you both for going to that. That's terrific. Um, Michael, I don't know whether you, uh, I had asked Pamela if she would come, but I don't see her up there. Who? Um, She's right here. She's so she <laughs> Are you Pamela? I'm, no, I'm not, I'm Patricia. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I am so sorry. Thank you. It's nice to see you. Bruce. Yes, it's nice to see you. Oh, that's fantastic. I didn't expect for you to be here in person. So thank you very, very much. Well, would you yeah, introduce yourself and uh, give us a quick summary of what you would, what you are doing? You want to come up so that the people yeah. on Zoom yeah. can hear you? Yes, come, please yeah, come up. We have here. <laughs> Patricia. <laughs> I, I, your last name is Mullins. Mullins, yes. Mullins. Yes. And terrific. Ah. And so yes. Tell my... people what you do. Right? Okay, my name is Patricia Mullins. I work with the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission, and I'm here with my colleague, Christy Lewis, who also uh, works with me in the um, community development uh, program. Part of that program includes applying for, on behalf of the, the town's CDBG grants, and, um, and then if um, those applications are successful, we generally administer those grants and do program delivery. Um, so administration is administration program delivery is actually providing the, the project itself, whatever we have applied for the funding for. Um, every CDBG grant can have more, more than one activity. Um, sometimes, um, and most of the time, they're best known for housing rehab for, uh, under community development block grants. 
but there are other projects you can do, including planning um, projects and um, infrastructure projects. Uh, you can do things for um, uh, architectural barrier removal, either design or and planning for that, or um, actual construction on municipal properties. So we've done the gamut with CDBG um, over the last 15 years or so. And um, for FY20, we applied for a grant um, on behalf of the town of Dalton. And Stockbridge, Beckett, and Sheffield were also partners in that grant. The FY20 grants should have been announced sometime later that same year, but because COVID hit during that time, they actually were not announced and awarded until um, you know, 2021. So we really lost quite a bit of time right at the beginning of, of this. So when we talk about FY20, that's a long time ago, but if you can kind of put yourself back into where you, where, what you were doing and what was going on and which color mask you were wearing during those days and everything. Um, and if you were working from your basement uh, office or whatever, um, those were the conditions that we had when we first started that grant. Um, that grant had a couple of activities in it. One was housing rehab that was took up the, the major portion of the grant. And the other activity had to do with planning, AD, um, doing ADA self-evaluations and transition plans. Now the planning could have been something else, but this just happened to be what the three, uh, three of the towns needed. So Dalton, Beckett, and um, Stockbridge were looking for funds for um, in order to, to put together their ADA self-evaluation and transition plans. Um, because it took a long time for, because you know, um, the um, agency, the state agency that is referred to now is the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. That was at that time called DHCD. Because they were so involved with um, the more immediate crisis of dealing with COVID and trying to roll out other programs that could assist people in the Commonwealth, um, they they delayed that announcement for the CDBG grants because, you know, they have a handful of people working and they can only do just so much. And, um, and, and you know, like every agency, they were hard pressed to, to respond to COVID. So, um, in the interim, I think um, looking for a more creative way to get funding for these ADA um, plans, Beckett and Stockbridge went ahead and applied to a different state agency for the same funding. So um, with BRPC's help, Mike and, um, at the, and the um, town administrator and Beckett at the time, we all got, put our heads together. We sent in applications to the Massachusetts Office on Disability where um, those grants were awarded very, very quickly. So that meant that we had some money left in the grant that is now in the planning activity. And um, what we're looking for today is to talk to you about a potential for, for um, doing an amendment to that grant and taking that, those funds and doing a project here in Stockbridge in under housing rehab. Uh, so that is the upshot of what I'm here to talk about. Um, and um, I can tell you a little bit of uh, some details about the project itself, but I can't share with you the name or the address of the applicant. Um, I just need to, to um, protect their privacy. That's um, part of the program. It's part of the federal, uh, this is the federally funded program under HUD and um, they write the rules. We're not um, allowed to share that information with you, um, but essentially, we're at the end of the grant, we have $32,000. And um, what we're wondering about is whether or not um, the town of Stockbridge could help us out if we um, need a few thousand dollars more. Now, we had a conversation the other day where I was telling you the total um, of the estimate, this is just an estimate um, for the entire project is much, much higher than that. Um, but we're looking at uh, a way to possibly be able to do sort of a stopgap project um, to um, uh, repair um, some pretty serious leaks in the house, um, in the roof of the house. And so um, we're kind of backing off from, from trying to do the entire project. Um, but after discussion with the homeowner, I think we, we probably could help them out in the short term and then they could come back later under a new grant and apply for further funds. So she's open to the plan we discussed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Which is just, to, we can say what the numbers are. It's 32,000 that you have available. Right. 
the project itself is estimated, no bid or right. It's just an estimate. Yeah, is eighty four thousand. It's right. a very large house. Right, and so um, we really don't have any spare money at the moment. The stopgap is how much? Where's the balance? Well, I mean, I I think that it. Um, I I strongly feel that that it would be less than ten thousand dollars. You know, something, and and really. What, it, what happens is at the very end of a grant, when there's no more money to, to get anywhere, it's hard to take on that last project. Um, and, and, um, and that would be, you know, that's the issue is we don't want, we can't go over because there's no place to get that extra money from. Right. So but we um, can fix the, pro the leak right. pro for the 32 that we yeah, have. Plus the 10, you should say. Right. 32 plus 10. Who, yeah. No more but, than 10. But I, I think what I'm saying is no. we would only ask for that money from you if our estimates, if, if our actual bids came in higher than the 32. So we're here sort of in advance to say, OK, if we put this out to bid and it comes in at 35 mm -hmm. and then they get into the project and they find out, uh oh, we need a little bit more sheathing. That sheathing's, you know, you know, we took off a couple of layers of, of um, mm -hmm. shingles and the sheathing is rotted or, or we need another rafter here or something like that. Because that's part of what makes made the original estimate so high is that there's a very strong chance that there's problems underneath the, the, the you know, surface. But um, Shingles. What we are very hopeful and expect is that we are we have applied for another one of these. Yeah, but they can't. We can't mix them together. Yeah. Well, we can no, if we get we, it. We we actually can't. No, we can. Absolutely, we can because she can do. If this works, we can fix the leak with the thirty-two, mm -hmm. and then she can come back to us when we get our new grant for the additional work. And we can use the new grant. Oh, I get that part. Okay. But I'm saying for this part yeah, here, yeah, yeah. we're going to have to appropriate yeah. up to three, five, ten grand, no, not to exceed number. Right. So for quotes come in, I think that that's what you're asking, right? Right. Is you exactly. want basically authorization? So, so I, I should say that although I think um, uh, Stockbridge and and I think it's Great Barrington, you said you were partnering with. I think um, that that you probably have a very uh, competitive grant application coming in. It's never guaranteed because it's it is competitive, you know. So yeah, most likely you're going to get that grant, and um, the homeowner could come back and 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 under that grant and reapply and 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 um, for the additional work. Exactly, you that could say, happen, but we can't count on that. So right, right now we just so have to, that, that's different than when we just what we discussed earlier. So you're suggesting that you're coming here to ask us to provide a small amount of cushion. Right. Should the thirty two should something greater than Correct. thirty two be needed? Correct. Actually, I'm I'm not really sure um, how this came about exactly. I I think I was invited to ask you at some point um, that that maybe the the housing trust might want to help with something like this. Um, you know we you know we don't know until we actually put it out to bid. Mm -hmm. But because this meeting came up, and I would say that if I'm going to ask you for something, that's what it would be. I would not be asking you for the difference between 32 and 84. That's Does it reason. matter if we authorize it now, or can you can you ask us to vote after you know by the firm quote? Um, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I'm okay with putting it out to bid. Um, just the partial, I'm okay with putting it out to bid and waiting. But here's the problem. The grant does end on June 30th, and we were looking for, you know, um, a, the possibility of getting this settled before we had to ask for an extension on that grant because it's not the first time it's been extended. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Almost all of the grants that that started during COVID did get extended, but you know we're getting. You know. What do you think about a motion not to exceed ten thousand? So that basically they're authorized to go ahead with it because you know June thirtieth is coming up around the corner and we don't want to lose the thirty. But you're not going to you're you're not going to actually do the project before June thirtieth. We probably we have stand a good chance of being able to do that. Do you considering you know that, that is a very limited project? You know yeah. that's that's uh, and if we can't, we'll ask for the extension. But um, we're more likely to. I would say if you can find a contractor to do a roof between now and June 30th. Yeah, I know. We we don't we don't only only have a few contractors that bid on these on these projects because the the paperwork's onerous. Um, and the, the one of the characteristics of these grants is that you can't pay a down payment. Um, everything has to be reimbursable. That you have to have the invoice first before you know. And and so it's very difficult um, to attract contractors, but. It, the ones that we do have, 
um, I really dedicated people and they, they, this is a niche for them. They like doing this kind of work and they will help us out when they can. And that, you know, they'll, they'll help us they'll come in and get it. Get they'll it. come in and get it done. A roof is not, doesn't take a lot of time. Even if, even if it turns out that there's, um, problems with the, um, you know, the sub. That's impressive. So what about the motion to send you? I have be a question before, um, is all of our funds are CPC funds. So is this type of a project? permitted under the, the restrictions of CPC yes. funding. It would be. Mm. Well, I, it's a repair yeah. though. We're not entitled to do repairs. Mm. Says who? Okay. Uh, it says the CPC rules. Well, um, I don't know if anybody knows. You remember they go on and on and on at the meetings. Well, you're a member of it. Mm -hmm. right. I'm is a newer right? member of it. Right. But I mean, the meetings I've been to, yeah, it's the, not supposed to be. You're not supposed to do repairs. So well, no. It's, hmm. Oh, they do that's interesting. Repairs. They do. So, they, so I think that the, the, the motion could be repairs. amended to not to exceed ten thousand based on uh, town administrators' confirmation that the our funding source can be used for this purpose. Yeah, we had already talked that there's a couple steps here that would have to be, we have to make sure there's grant assurance agreements in place, liens in case the property sold within so many years. Right. There's a bunch of steps here, so mm -hmm. it's not guaranteed, but we would move ahead right. with. It depends on what the bids come in at, where we're at, and then whether or not we can. And uh, and I just would also point out that if uh, if Karen Pelto's uh, project goes forward, that is C CBDG style, and there's an opportunity for another funding source for the other half, which might be because we're in the census track for that EPA community change grant. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's just another right. opportunity. Yeah, and they're mostly focused on the west side of Pittsfield, but uh, we're we are being included in that. Good. In that um, Excellent. in that grant application to the feds, so there might be another opportunity there to find. And, to and also, I think we're going to be very active in assuming we get the, the next CBDG grant. Right. But that's separate uh, from the community. By the time it's over, you you'll be able to rattle off all of those. <laughs> <laughs> so can we make the motion? Because I'm going to have to go. Um, unless somebody else wants. No, please so, make the motion. So I make a motion. We fund uh, this. Stopgap uh, repair by at a not to exceed price of ten thousand dollars, based on the uh, the uh, terms and conditions that the town administrator works out with the Berkshire Regional Development. You got all that. You got that. Berkshire Regional Planning. Berkshire Regional Planning. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I watch this later. Second, do it all. PSP. <laughs> All right. I didn't Patricia. take time. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I did. I and it's it's, it's a pleasure to. to, to uh, you have to vote, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Do we have a second? We have a second. All right. Who's, wait, 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 wait. Who seconded? Who's, Who's, Kayla. Thank, thank you. Kayla. Kayla. <laughs> that was my update on the EPA Community Change Grant, which I see is later in the agenda. Yes, I was going to ask you that. But all in favor of this, and Bruce, your, uh, Bruce is on now. Bruce. Bruce has got a thumb up there. Oh, All right. I Put patch it back on the steering wheel, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce. <laughs> but, oh, you're driving. Okay. So that's one. Aye. Aye. Aye, Rennie. Aye, Liz. Aye, Mark. Aye, Michaela. Unanimous. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Thank you for having me. Oh, considering this, I appreciate it. Okay. Nice to meet you. All right. Well, Patrick, stay yeah. two more minutes because I want you to see this. All right. Mark. Oh, wow. All right. 120 seconds. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Thank you both for coming. Yes, very Thank much. You. Oh, Thank you. Bye bye. Patty. Oh, that's not wonderful. Is he able to share on the Zoom? Thank you. Thank you. What is it? I'm going to activate screen share before you can just put together a video of housing types that he's looked okay, at. We that we can... Mark, can you just send me a link? No, it's not. Uh, see it now. You do. It's just, yes. you can wait two minutes. No, I really can't. He's got a minute. <laughs> I just write 20 minutes. All right, screen sharing is on. <laughs> Okay. okay, here we go. All right, I'll watch it. All right, I, I can send it to you, but it, it's uh, all right, all right, try it. I lost my uh thing here. Oh, go back to Zoom and share. Pinky. There it is. Is that it? But I had it right there. So yeah. Here's Zoom. Here's Zoom. Okay, open. I got too many things open. All right, I'm on screen share. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the, put a lot of work into it. So oh, right. Let's watch this. this. Can I minimize it? I'm not going to be able to see this thing is on my uh, desktop. How yeah. Do I, how do I go to here. Screen? Just go there. And then what? It should show up. 
all your things that are open should have appeared, but I don't. Oh, well, I didn't open it. Oh, yeah, open it. I gotta get, I gotta get to my. All right, sorry about this. Oh, who is here? It's over here. Great. So if you go back now, go back to the Zoom, go share screen. Right here. And then click share sound. Great. Now close. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, it's not. I don't know why it's not sharing. <laughs> Hold on. There's a little delay in the tree. Oh, wait, sorry. Go back. What was that thing? You just. I'm going to pause this one second. Yeah, so it needs to go back. Persistence coming on. System settings are telling you that you don't have the ability to somewhere in your Zoom is set up that it's can't not, that. it can't share. Yeah. yeah. Well, Do we have technical technical difficulties? I can play it on my computer, but not everybody will be able to see it. Let's so it won't go up on the screen? Mm -hmm. No. Not right now. Okay. Well, um, I can try to mess with this for a second. Well, if you, you guys come up here, I can just put it right here and and just play it. We can all see it. It's not, I can't see it. Yeah, let's let's. Uh, they, let's oh, they can't see it. The yeah. audience. Let's okay. uh, not that they see any of this anyway. Okay. <laughs> let's let's see if Michaela can yeah, fix. Let me just mess it. with it for a second. We'll go on. on. Okay. There's a few more things. Um, so <clears throat> next is everyone received a copy of the first. Um, the vote we voted last time to have a, a survey of the entrance piece so we, we would identify exactly what we mm -hmm. what is our property. We have that information now. And of course, it has uncovered that we need more information. So um, we have a we need a vote to uh, survey the entire property so that we can establish for certain exactly where our boundary lines are. So I would ask you for approval. We have a proposal from Foresight, the same people who did this report, to do the full survey. Um, and it's, uh, it's it, because it was difficult to estimate it, it they set a cap on it, uh, not uh, to exceed $10,000 to do the survey. All right, well, I would move to, to approve the funds for up to $10,000 for a survey, or if you think we should Put a little bit more on than that, or well, um, we don't. We really can't, all right, because otherwise we'd have to. Have the bid. All right, and just to to make the point that you know we've we've acquired this land and we really need to know exactly what we have for the record, for permanent, for history, for the development. We need to know exactly what yeah. what the borders are, and and uh, done with the screen shares. Uh, we could. It, it's. In Mark's settings, we can't. We're All right. we can't get it. So. I'll just shut it off because we have had issues. Yes, that's right. Yep. All right. Can we turn it back on if, if we need it? You can turn we... it back on. Yes. Oh. We just keep it off because we've had we've been zoom bombed with inappropriate. <laughs> oh really? Yes. Oh my goodness. Whoa. <laughs> that we don't need. Yeah. But I just ask a question on the survey. Can How can foresight do all the right. other? information without knowing Morning. exactly where all the borders are. Because uh, we asked for a very defined area and it was very, we have all the information for the defined area that we, we were just doing the entrance piece and uh, we have all that information so they could, the surveyors could go out and, uh, and, and check the monuments that are there. What they discovered is there's some monuments missing and also in the research that she did, uh, what the land that, that we received 
is what's called a remainder land. And many, many years ago, 1887, I think it is, the gentleman who owned the, the hillside and a lot more started selling off uh, plots to people to build homes. And they would define the plots to fit, you know, exactly. And then they would say, whatever's left is in the big piece. And so that's, that's very commonly done. And so as a result, all the, the borders all around um, are, are very, uh, are not as carefully defined as we should have them. So that's, that's the next step to but go all the way. Road, the entrance of the property, that's, that's been surveyed and, and that's carved in stone. I mean, that's set, that you, there's no issue with, that has to be resurveyed or anything. No, that doesn't have to be resurveyed. We have that information. Michael, Michael please stand up. Oh, yes, Michael. Um, why do you need the precise measurements of the other property lines, such as where the wetlands are and the back where the telephone poles are? The reason You're not going to develop that area. So, but the reason is that there's a lot of uh, Heather, the woman who's doing it. I met with her and went through this is that there are bits and pieces of this land um, that it haven't, haven't been understood, is I guess the best way. And as, a, as an entity that um, I, I personally think we have a piece of land, we should know exactly what we have. Most properties don't have surveys. Most properties rely on plot plans which are estimates of your boundaries, which is what the town maps are, those are sufficient 90% of the time, unless you're into a dispute over property lines or the rest. You're gonna be doing some property lines that are nowhere close to any development you're proposing. So it just seems like it is money that is being spent that is not necessary at all. Well, um, I guess I just have it. I, I personally, as a developer, uh, want to know exactly what we own. But if people, um, th there are some points that the, there are points in this survey that Heather highly recommended that we do a full survey because there are pieces of this land that people, um, she thinks there are things that we own that people aren't, don't realize that we own that may have an impact on our so, for example, we own the front of everybody's lawn roughly 18 to 20 feet, but we don't do anything with it. So you're not going to, you know, in right of ways or the rest. The side that's all wetlands, whether you're off by 10, 20, whatever, on a plot plan, how is it relevant? That's the only question I would ask is, why would that be relevant to us to know? Um, we're not going to enforce any rights. The town doesn't have to worry about... Um, adverse possession or anything, the town is not subject to any of those. Um, so I'm just not sure why those other lines, unless you're trying to discover something that would impact the development of the property, why you would need to know the rest of those. Well, it is $10,000. I mean, some of these lines, like the line where um, the southern border of this parcel hits the electrical lines, that goes across the whole southern area. We don't, we don't need to have anybody get in there and muck around with that. That's never going to be an issue. We're nowhere near it with our project. And even the side that's near the solar is already town town owned. And the other side is wetlands. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I understand as a developer what you're thinking. And I yeah, I, uh, Michael, I understand your position, but I uh, I personally highly recommend that we do the survey. Uh, that, can they do a more limited one where they don't do some of the boundaries? Uh, that are, oh, yeah, we can ask them. I mean, some of them just don't seem getting out there and going up against that, that three or 400 yards with the electrical lines is Mass Electric owns that or whoever's the utility, and that's just not. Well, actually, that uh, if you look at the developable parcel, it goes right up to that line. Yeah. And also it goes, and those, and, and setbacks, well, if we do friendly 40B setbacks, I don't think um, will affect us. But knowing I, one of the things she said that um, it, we should discover is the road that leads up here 
um, may belong to this parcel and that may have an impact on us. So okay. if you wanted to take it apart and say, we just need this part and that part mm -hmm. in order to determine. Um, I, <laughs> I guess I've never had a parcel that I didn't want to know exactly what I owned. Yeah, well, with our with our limited dollars, if there's a way to save anything, but I do see we're right up. But this is town. This is right. land here. Exactly. That's the utility. That's the utility right and away. These are the houses. Possible right up against that yeah. line. Well, they'd be pretty close to that line yeah. if we got into the third one. And um, is this the road? Because that's right. That's the that's the road. little entryway to this solar thing. The, mm -hmm. the entryway here, off Glendale Middle. Yeah. Manny. Yes, Bruce. Yeah, this may also become knowing exactly what the property lines and all are may also become relevant with some of the issues uh, which, you know, in which I will, you know, provide a short report around water and sewer. And so um, I agree with you. I, I, I don't like owning a parcel of land and not knowing exactly what the parameters are. Anybody else said? I think you made a. Do we have a motion? You have, <laughs> way back when. All right. <laughs> okay. it, it, it was a motion to uh, approve Ford site doing a survey with a cap. For up to $10,000 for the remainder of the parcel. And uh, a second. Somebody? Second. Thank you, Bruce. Um, the. I, I can ask Heather whether there are parts of the of it that she feels either we have definitive information mm -hmm. or that uh, she would agree with Michael that we don't need to do. But um, all right, well, all right. Well, should we then do we table it? No, I think we could authorize it. We don't have to spend it. Okay, it, it, we're just authorizing up to. Um, and and I don't think it's going to be ten thousand, um, but, but and that's with her opinion that we need it. Is that what you're saying? We could authorize up to ten thousand with Heather's opinion that all is needed. Yes, if you want to modify the the uh, motion, is Heather part trying to clarify? Yes, Heather, um, and I'm sorry, part of foresight. I think her last name is Brown is the person, in, she's a surveyor and she runs a surveying uh, division of their company. That's okay. one of the, okay. that's one of the services okay. that they provide. So she would be the one doing this that she's recommending. She would, do. Uh, yes. She doesn't go out in the okay. field and tromp around in the wetlands, but she does all the. Well, I don't think we need research. to include her name in this at all. I mean, just yeah. authorizing up to $10,000 to complete the full survey of the parcel. Okay. All right. All those in favor, Bruce? Bruce, I. Jan, I. Randy, I. Liz, I. Mark, I. Kayla, no, I'm. I'm. I'm a, I feel. I have to be honest. I feel a little. I don't mean to throw a wrench in, but I, in taking into consideration what Michael's saying, and I, I just what I am hesitant about is I don't want people in town feeling like we're spending money that doesn't need to be spent. And that makes me, that's that's why I'd almost want to hear from her first before we authorize. Okay, that's so, fine too. I agree. I, that I just, <laughs> we we can. Uh, Normally I'm like a yeah, but this, I feel like we might want to be. Okay. More, just I make sure we're being. That's terrific. So what I suggest is um, I will go back I, and table meet is. with her and we will reconsider it at our next meeting with additional information from. from yeah, her. especially if she can. If there's areas we already know or not, you know, going to be okay. So do we have a, a we want a motion to table this motion? <laughs> I think it's been tabled. It's been tabled. It sounds like our secretary has tabled well, the we, motion. We, we can't, I guess we have to vote. Can we? <laughs> yeah, all right. The, who's can right? I, yes, Bruce. That we table it. Um, definitively so that we table it to the next meeting so that it doesn't just sit on the table for um, yeah. no, no to the next meeting with additional so that we can get some additional information for once great all right um 
I well, think Liz has already made the motion, but uh, well, I'll, well, I'll make the motion. Make to, the motion. To table it until the next meeting to find out what what surveyor really thinks we can, if we can do less. Okay. Second. Good. All, right. All those in favor of the motion to, to table? Aye. 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 So we have to go around. Aye. Bruce? Aye, Bruce. Jan? Aye, Jan. Aye, Randy. Aye, Liz. Aye, Mark. I'm Kim. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank Moving you. on. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can I just ask, yeah. sorry, sure. we have to leave, and I, I just, there's one thing that was on your agenda that it was the uh, utility service, you're going to have a report on that today. Well, Bruce is the one who is doing research on that, and he wanted very much to meet with you, um, but he's on. Um, what well, do you want to get his report? Uh, yeah, Bru order? Bruce, you want to tell us, so you give us your report, we'll take it out of order. Sure. Um, so I spoke to um, both uh, uh, Mike uh, Buffoni and, uh, and Tony Campetti. Um, Mark was nice enough to provide me their contact information. Um, uh, Mike was, um, Mike is in, Mike, Mike runs water. And he basically said that the housing um, that's there and the availability for water for housing and some even additional housing uh, seems to be okay. But the issue, which I think Mark may have reported at the last meeting, is fire suppression. Um, the size of the pipes and the available water supply for it, um, given the um, even the smallest uh, pump truck, fire, fire pump truck that, that the fire department has, would basically drain it very quickly um, because of the volume of water that's necessary to fight fires and um, and work would need to be done. I think they're three inch pipes and they would need to go to at least eight, 10, maybe 12 inch pipes um, and the work to do that. And he was nice enough to give me a sort of a, an early ballpark figure um, based upon a GAO, a, a GAO maps that he has um, and the a distance um, that it would be necessary to to reach the, the current mains that are there and bring uh, adequate water um, with new new pipes um, to our site, to, to the property that we now own. Um, the expenses for that, as with everything else in construction with COVID and the like, has gone up dramatically. And so if we, we now would have to pay $350 per foot um, yeah. of pipe. And uh, there's almost 1,700 feet of pipe. So the, the ballpark figure just for the piping is about 580 some thousand dollars. Um, and then um, there probably will be some extras in there because he said that uh, at some point in time, the piping would need to be done under the railroad tracks. And as a result, there would, we would incur, or we or the developer would incur uh, additional expense to fortify the railroad tracks while they're basically excavating and putting new piping in underneath it. So that's where we are on water. Um, a minimum of uh, probably almost $600,000 in order to get um, adequate water supply that would not only supply the homes that we put there, but mm -hmm. also that would allow for any fire suppression. And Bruce, then we'd also have to pay to get the water up into the property. That's just the six hundred is just to get us get the water to the front door, right? Correct. That is correct. And those would would be another one of the additional expenses above and beyond just creating adequate size piping um, that could bring water to the property. Um, irrespective of anything else we would need to do to get it to individual homes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. On the okay. sewer, on the sewage side, um, the, all of the homes there, all of the homes that are in that area off of the uh, uh, Glendale Middle Road and whatnot, uh, tend to use uh, pumps um, because they're not, um, they're not the typical sewage uh, gravity drainage. Um, so the sewage that comes out of the homes is basically pumped into the sewer lines. And he, uh, uh, Tony, um, 
uh, unlike a mic, did not have does not have access to any um, kind of maps or information that would allow him to give me any kind of ballpark figure. He said we would need to engage an engineer um, to basically evaluate the size of the um, the sewage pipes, the sewage lines that are there, um, and determine um, what would need to be done um, and how much it would uh, it would cost in order to um, add additional um, additional sewage uh, from uh, from coming from that property. And he said that um, he can either provide me uh, some um, ref referrals to people, to engineers who could basically do that information, or he could be the go-between and make contact with them on our behalf, uh, but there would be a cost to that. And he doesn't know exactly what it is, although he says he thinks it will be short money. But I don't know, I don't know what the magnitude of short money is at this point in time. In, so in that, other words, to get an estimate, to, to hire an engineer to... Uh... To tell us what would need to be done um, the, and then potentially give us an estimate of what it would cost to actually do it. Okay. I, I got a question. Don Schneier is here. He's chair of the Water Sewer, and Sewer Commission. <clears throat> um, and as I understand it, Don, we have like a three-inch sewer pipe. Yeah, well, three-inch low pressure. Low pressure. The low pressure comes from these pump grinder pumps that people have in their yards. And it pushes that sewage along eventually up the hill to 183, where it joins a bigger sewer main and that can flow down to this. Right. So so in, in your opinion, um, would if there were, say, 24 more bedrooms that, that were going to feed into that line, um, would the three inch capacity be sufficient or while everything's dug up to do the water mains, new sewer mains would also be required? I would assume so. Yeah. As, as far as, uh, see, see, Mike knows with the water, there's so much flow and pressure with water. As far as sewer, that's an that's a engineering uh, issue um, because we don't know uh, how much that three-inch line will take addition. Now, remember, when we first designed that, that three-inch line of Glendale Middle Road, it was for the housing on that street. Right. And that's what we did for that whole area. Right. Uh, it was going to be cost prohibitive to do gravity. So we decided to save the town some money and uh, everybody has a grinder pump right. in, in that part of town. Right. And um, they elected to have that. Uh, and again, to save ourselves some money. And uh, we've had issues with those. So obviously, a lot of us have replaced them already. I've had to replace but, one. But that's another issue. Yeah. But, but yeah. obviously, as far as I'm concerned, if that issue, um, if there was a development there, that line would have to be uh, adjusted. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not an engineer. I understand. But an engineer will tell us that. Yeah. I mean, if. Oh, Mike, sorry. Go ahead. I know that I, I've also spoken when talking about this, and a lot of it also in order to engage our engineers depends on what the potential build out of the site is. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to run those calculations and it's 70, say you want to be able to down the road put in X homes, you know, maybe, maybe you do a phased approach or whatever, you're going to have to calculate what the line size is going to have to be based around the maximum build out of this. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into calculations based on how many bedrooms, the rest, the topography, the pump station itself, how well that can handle, does that need to be upgraded? But a lot of that will all depend on the size and scope of the potential build out, not just. So understand that you build it out to add. You know, we talked once, if it was three or four homes back there, you might be able to put it out of the system that it is. If it's 78, you're taught no. No. Besides no. maintenance, the <laughs> pump station, everything. He's so a little of it is figuring out what your scope is in order for us to get some real costs. Right. Uh, estimated. Doesn't make sense. Thank you. Don, thanks for yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. thank, thank you for coming. Oh, Don. Yeah. Um, I, I think Bruce, uh, Bruce, you're going to be here in the next week or so, isn't that right? That's correct. Okay. Can we? Uh, I know he'd like to meet with you. Sure. If um, give me a call at my house. And okay. Yeah. Um, how do we get your number? 
Uh, I'll send it to you. Yeah, <laughs> you Michael will send it. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. Okay. We're live here. We're not giving out numbers. No. Right. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> thank, thank you very thanks. much. Thanks, Don. Okay. Don, I'll speak with you next week. He's okay. Got he got it. All right. I, Michaela, we can see your pretty face. I can share this if you want. <laughs> oh, do we need to hit the share button up yeah. here? And we'll see. How just, just to back up on this for a second, do we do we want me to um, make contact with the engineers and get a ballpark figure, um, an estimate on what they would, what it would cost us to have the engineering work, the preliminary engineering work done, or do we want me to? Um, ask Tony to be the intermediary and uh, and and tee that up for us, and then I'll come back to the next meeting with what you know what we'll have to what, what we have to spend one way or the other. Because if Tony tees it up, he's not going to pay for it. it. It seems to me we we need to do a little what Michael was saying of try to figure out what kind of development we we're talking about. Yeah. In order to yeah. be able to move forward on. I mean, one of our on that. things when we divided up the areas to investigate was, you know, kind of what what is this project consist of and how many how many units are we thinking and how many bedrooms and mm -hmm. it would probably be better to go to the engineering people when we have a better fix on what we want to do and then they can say, okay, well that's twenty seven bedrooms and we're gonna we can tell you based on that uh, what we need. So I think we need to. Bruce, I think we need to know a little more about our own plans before it's worth you and, and others doing investigating for things that we are kind of shooting in the dark. That's fine. I do, I do think I, I agree that we uh, when we give direction for the study, because ultimately we'll have to have a study. Um, Bruce, if you do talk to Tony, I know, Michael, isn't it? We do have someone in the town, that, an engineer that you use. We have a typical engineer that we use for these type of projects, which I would recommend they're familiar with. They've just done the I and I study and the cameraing of our system. They're very familiar with it. With if you were to give them a scope of what the maximum this build out could potentially be that you guys would consider, then they could tell you what the worst, you know, what the maximum cost would be. And because you want to future proof the mains. These are the mains, not right. the service right. connections. Right. Or what potentially could go in. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that it won't matter what we tell them in terms of, you know, the number of bedrooms. Um, it would be useful to talk, Bruce to talk to Tony and ask him to ask the, the engineers uh, what what uh, the order of magnitude of the study might be once we get our plans. They will come back to them with the request once we know a little more about what we're planning to do. That's fine. That's great. Thank you. All right. Should I try? Yes, let's try. Let's try. Because we're ready to discuss next steps.
Bruce, tell us a little bit how you are the speakers. Bruce, excuse Mark. me. I can't seem to get anybody's name right. Mark, well, would you like um, to tell us I how just, that happened? I just went online and Googled small houses, pictures of small houses, and, and a lot of them came up from different sites. And I just downloaded them and strung them together in a little slideshow. Um, but uh, I, I know at one point we had talked, and I think Jackie, you were interested in in this at one point about some examples of things. And and um, I mean, I don't know exactly how this will ever turn out when we do this, but these are these show that you can build some nice smaller houses that look stylistically look nice. They're not out of character with with the rest of the area there. Um, maybe they're 1,200, 1,300 square feet, two bedroom, maybe three bedroom, but they, part of the advantage of this would be that at a price per square foot to construct something, if we do 1,200 instead of 1,500 or, you know, people 2,500 square foot houses, we can't do that. So these are small houses that are co compatible with the neighborhood and, and at least give us a vision of some of the styles that might mm -hmm. work in that setting, so... That's just... I think it's absolutely terrific. Beautiful set of photographs of houses. Um, I, I like that they didn't all look the same. Yes. I like the idea of not building something that everything looks the same, but that looks yeah. like a regular neighborhood yeah, where it's just... And you know, one you know, thing that, that I concluded when I was looking at these pictures was <clears throat> a lot of times people think about like Pinewoods where you have the entrance and then you have the road, the circle road, and then the houses around it. And I started thinking from some of the examples I saw that, wait a minute, we want people to be together and have a neighborhood and be able to walk out the door and be in their front yard with other kids and stuff, that maybe the houses should be the circle and the road should go on the outside and you should walk to the backyard to get in your car. I mean, just to uh, in, instead mm -hmm. of, you know, being a slave to the parking spaces in front of the house. I think if most well, you can't tell, but in the ones where you show the yards, particularly where you show the groups. Yeah, there's I mean, it's a wonderful one of the most expensive places to live on Beacon Hill is Lewisburg Square, mm -hmm. which was a development that was done by the proprietors of uh, Beacon Hill when a bad slice of the economy came along and that was those houses were the down market yeah. houses. That John Kerry's there now. Yeah, right. <laughs> John Kerry lives there now. Yeah, he's but, your neighbor. Um, anyway, it's just a, it's just a, uh, just a, a little sampler of what we can be yeah. envisioning because at some point we'll get down to that. But thank you. I think yes, it's absolutely you. fabulous. We thank should you for getting that going. I'm glad we <laughs> Kayla, have a thank you. I think we should show that <laughs> as inspiration to us all every time we meet. Thank you very very much, Mark. Okay, um, we're going to just talk a little bit about what we found. Um, and I'm, it looks like I'm on first. I happened to be in Boston a week ago. And Shelly Going um, is someone that at, many of you have heard her name. She's head of the affordable housing section of um, the Mass Housing Partnership. And I have to say, it gets very confusing because there's the Mass Housing Partnership, Mass Housing, there's about four different agencies. Some of them provide money, some of them provide technical. And uh, she was very, very helpful uh, in giving, uh, she promised me actually in writing, which she hasn't been able to deliver yet, but we will have um, sort of a, 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 a little bit of a, of a direction on where to start. And a couple of things that she told me that were new to me is that we need to be careful about exactly this. There's a prescription of what we as a trust can do to set the tone for what we want. Um, she also was very skeptical. I was very surprised at this, but we've talked about wanting, um, wanting to have uh, for sale housing, which I think for me, I think that's the most appropriate type of housing for this neighborhood uh, because it's single family homes uh, primarily there as opposed to rental. But Shelley was very much, um, shall we say, non-enthusiastic about for sale housing. 
And she said, if you're going to do for sale housing, you better do a marketing study and make sure that you have enough people who, who have the incomes to buy these. So that's one thing that uh, once we get further along, if we, if we decide to focus on for sale housing, she, she thought that was one of our important first steps is to figure out whether is, there was a market. Is it also true that there's more government funding available for rental than sale? And the reason she, that's, yes, that's, it's very true. And the reason, I, this, this was also a surprising thing that she told me. She said the reason that the government did that is that neighbors very much opposed to, to rental housing. And so the government set up the program so that it was much easier to do rental housing, which is why the, um, uh, the, the various programs are so that you can get through the NIMBY kind of uh, opposition, which I thought was a remarkable piece of history about how our government programs are set up. Yeah, I just wonder philosophically for the government, the government's trying to provide roofs over people's head and, and building equity is, is a secondary or distant goal and, and ownership housing is one category. But if you really just want to get as many people as you can to into as many units as you can, you want to, you're going to go rental. I would think that's maybe what's behind well, the majority, philosophy. The majority of the things, the product that they, that our Commonwealth produces um, is, is rental. And my good friend, uh, Marty Jones, who is, did the spectacular development in in Boston when I called her and said we had this opportunity and would she be available to us she said no she said I only do rental she said if you want to do rental um I'm, she said no because she's too busy she's doing so many projects now but um it, she she said I just don't do for sale housing so I totally get this. This is where <laughs> I'm the one who's always going, we really need rentals. Young people, we were young. I couldn't buy a house then. I didn't have a down payment, but I worked in town or I worked wherever and I needed a home and you could rent something and it was affordable. And it, maybe it feels like you're throwing your money out the window, which you are a little bit, but you're also establishing what it is that you want to do and where you want to be. I don't know. I have, I, I, and I see such a problem with, there are so many homes now that have been sold and the people who are renting them are displaced and there is nowhere for them to go and they don't have the down payment. So I totally, I totally yeah. get this. Yeah. Um, is it possible to build houses like what we saw in that video and rent them to people? I don't know. I, don't know. I, mean, I always think of rental as multifamily and, and you know, we're not going to put in something you know, like the Bentley Avenue uh, <laughs> apartments down in Great Barrington. Great Barrington has a place for these things. Right. We don't. Um, so this this is one of the things when we talked at our last meeting about what direction should we go in, and we parceled out the responsibilities. That this this whole this big question, rental ownership, you know, is is really a big mm -hmm. it's a big issue. A big issue that, that will drive everything else that we do, and we're, and we're, and where we may be able to get support. Um, and and whether we can do anything that's a capital A affordable, you know, mm -hmm. ownership seems pretty unlikely. I mean, I, I just figured out if if it's a twelve hundred square foot house and it costs five hundred dollars oh, no, per square foot, just six hundred thousand dollars. Is four hundred no no longer an a good number? That's not oh, very good. Year ago, it's four hundred per yeah, square well, foot. Everything has gone up, 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 and it certainly hasn't gone down. Yeah. So even building a even a thousand square feet at five hundred, so this is, is a half a million. So this is beyond what a young family can do. It's way beyond what a young family can do. Right, but we can't. We cannot build and sell at the, the price we're going to build. We, it means, right. but these are going to have to. Absolutely. We're going to have to raise money to lower the price, which is what Habitat exactly. for Humanity. That's the Habitat does. model. Mm -hmm. That's the Habitat model. And is Bruce trying to reach us? Yeah, Bruce? I. I just curious about a comment that you made, Mark, that you don't think you think that we need to have, you know, sort of a, a multi dwelling building for people to rent. I think that there's people that would rent a house. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I would I would prefer that. And it would also be in keeping with the neighborhood and with the town character. So I'm not pushing like a, a big multifamily development. I'm just 
I'm just thinking we're the Affordable Housing Trust and we might be undertaking a, a, a major effort here to create a bunch of housing that's unaffordable. And well, I, but I, I agree I, with you in, in <laughs> terms of sales, but I think that there, I think we could create, you know, um, sort of a, 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 a multifamily housing development that's basically all freestanding homes and people would rent them. And, and you know, I think the, the issue with people renting a home is that they're probably likely to stay there longer than somebody renting an apartment in a building. Well, it'd be nice if we could, if the, if the economics of this work out and you can build a 1200 square foot home and rent it at a price that people could afford, I'd, I'd love it. Uh, but I, I just, I don't know. I don't know the economics of it. I don't know how those numbers would work. Can I ask a, a question as just like, if I'm stepping back on a macro scale and if I, if I'm sitting at home watching these meetings and, and I'm hearing and, you know, obviously we don't have anything set in stone, but I'm hearing like, okay, it's going to cost $600,000 to get water in there. Mm. You know, I, I don't, I, I hope to see this go through because I want people to have affordable housing in this community. But my question becomes at, at what point do we say this is actually not viable mm -hmm. and at what, or, or is it like, okay, we do need to know what kind of housing and now we need to go into like fundraising hardcore before right. we can even do anything else. Because if we know we're starting at an entry level of $600,000 just to get water. And that's and just that's, to the street. That's, yeah, that's not right. to the and, private. And it's so, not the sewer. So I guess, uh, yeah. like, I don't want to be a, a downer. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I'm I, trying to be a realist, a realist. you know, and, um, and, and ask that question. Well, another thing to consider is without, there's no base for a road. So a road is roughly right now $1 million per mile. Yeah. So yeah. just to give you an idea of, you know, depending on how far in you're going, you know, there's there's a minimum cost there of at least that. And that might that's on the low end. Yeah. That's on the low end. Well, I want you to get the utilities underneath and the rest. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I've had this thought as we as we've started to encounter these um challenges and expenses. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that at some point um, are all the accommodations needed to be able to use this site so costly that it basically eliminates the benefit of having the land donated to us? You know, is there a point at which, well, it's great we have the land, which is a huge break to get when you're providing housing, but if you can't get a building in there or buildings in there without an enormous amount of site preparation, then it's like, well, maybe should, we should be looking for other land. I mean, actually, I talked to you a little bit at one point about trying to see if there's any town-owned land that's not in wetlands. And, 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 and I have that Okay, that's good. And then, it's just acquired. And then I start thinking about the Levon property, which had a price tag of a million plus. Mm -hmm. But um, and then you'd have you know clearing land and stuff like that. But it's on a main road. It's there's already buildings there. Water problem. There's a water, water problem. problem there, too. Yeah. That's okay. Well, I, and I only ask because then I think, okay, well, if let's say we table this for a second, then is it is it a re-strategizing of saying, okay, well, maybe we need to start some sort of campaign of reaching, of keeping, I know we talked about this at one point, keeping track of these properties that are tax, lack, tax starting to, and... yeah, starting to fall into issues. Are we putting a campaign together to reach out to homeowners who might be looking to downsize and go somewhere else and say, would you consider um, re reaching out to the, consider selling to us first? You know, that's, like- That's my job. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, wa I wonder about that because I know Lennox, it, Lennox has been able to do larger things now, but, I, but they were quite successful in starting with those two mm -hmm. single family homes and two is better than none. Right. You know, so I so I just wonder what avenue did they rent be. or sell yeah. those? Do you remember? I believe those were but they were lottery, weren't they? Were lottery? They were yeah, sold, sold, yes. sold. Yes. Yeah, they were they were sold. sale. for sale yeah. for sale. Yeah. Um, so I just I just wonder if there's a, a point at which we we sort of like re strategize. It, it's it's not going to be yeah valuable. It seems to me that none of us are really experts enough in kind of looking at this and deciding whether it's a viable project or not. 
or whether there is a viable project and what it might look like. And one of the ways that we might proceed is to look for a development consultant who has had experience in developing affordable housing, both rental and ownership, and engage them to see if they can make a suggestion about what might be viable going forward or not. And I don't know how much that would cost, but it might, I think having us try to put all the pieces together when we none of us have the kind of experience base. That, be way off base and not even know it. Yeah, I, I really think what we should do is try to identify a development yes, consultant I, who I think that could help us figure out whether this is a viable, whether there's a viable no, option. No. Before we like put the sauce on it. Yeah. On, on that subject, um, I know we have on the point here where we're talking about possible funding sources. And um, when you get to that, I, I would have something to say about possibly some help along the lines that you're descri describing, Jan. Um, mm -hmm. are, we, are we at that point yet? or? Um, if um, I, I think that when I met with Shelley to tie to that, to what you're just saying, trusts typically have um, some sort of development consultant. Right. And I uh, agree that that what we're doing right now in terms of getting preliminary information are very helpful in trying to give some direction right, in terms of our thinking. Um, because if you just, uh, I, mean, I, I don't think you can really hire someone. But one of the solutions, and, and I don't know if I'm taking something from you, Mark, but mm -hmm. that Shelley recommended is that Mass Housing Partnership, we can apply uh, to them and they have free technical advice. Um, and Mass Housing also provides that. So both of those two agencies, um, Mass Housing does it a little differently. You apply and you get a grant and then you use that grant to hire them. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Mass Housing Partnership just lets you apply and they give you the services for free. Um, what I don't know, and I, I should check with my friend Marty, um, to find out what the, the quality of the, the difference. Shelley's uh, supervisor is a woman named Laura Sherfit. Did you get that name, Mark? Okay. Anyway. I think you gave it to me, but I hadn't talked to her. Anyway, she's, um, she's the one that actually runs the technical mm. services. Mm -hmm. But those, those are two places options. that we could go, two options. And I could talk a little more with Karen about because she has, she's not a development consultant, okay. but she has experience in these in, areas. So she may have some other some names. Avenues. Yeah, and I also mentioned the uh, um, Jim that I Jim Harwood to him so. in in Rick. Yes, Bruce. Um, yes, I've also spoken to um, a friend um, and uh, of mine, uh, Gary Johnston, who runs uh, Interlake and uh, Land Management, and. Um, he he's a multi generational person from Stockbridge. You, you probably all know he's uh, been re just recently been reelected as moderator, um, and um, I spoke to Gary about it, and he basically uh, had some um, some thoughts about people to whom he could speak because his parents um, over the years um, had basically uh, gotten. Um, I don't know whether they donated or sold some land that ultimately went into development. And so he was going to also give me, see if he could find some names of, some, of someone that I could talk to or that we could talk to, um, to help in that regard as well. So I've got that, that, that feeler out and um, I'll let, if, I'll let you know if I, when I hear back from Gary about anything he's found, he said, unfortunately, the, the, the two people whose names immediately came to him, um, that worked with his parents and I think his grandparents, uh, unfortunately, have both passed. Um, but um, he was going to see who who the baton was turned over to and um, um, and get back to me. OK. So that might be an source of someone that could develop be a consultant from a development perspective of uh, of raw land. Mm -hmm. Mark, you want to. All right, well, I I. Um... Uh, following last week's meeting, um, 
wanted to start looking into possible funding sources because there's this big alphabet soup of all kinds of agencies, some of them in the private sector, a lot of them in the government. And I came across the one-stop program uh, for the state, uh, which I'm sure Michael's familiar with. But what they've devised a couple of years ago, the state, the state did this because they, they kept having people saying, look, we don't know where to go, how, who to turn to, what programs are available. So they have, a, they have something called the one-stop. And the uh, Office of Economic Development, the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, and Mass Development all are participating in this. And you put in one application, and they feed it to all the appropriate agencies to consider it for either funding or to give you feedback on it. And it looks at what they describe as the, as the development continuum, meaning everything from community activation and placemaking, I'm not sure what that means, but planning and zoning, site preparation, building and infrastructure. So there are grants available for all of these things. And if you put in your application, unfortunately, there's a deadline on June 5th, and we don't really know enough at this point to put an application in. Is it only do it once a year? Yes, it is. And I mean, I, I didn't open up the application, but it seems like it's probably pretty complex. And I think this would be a lot of questions I couldn't answer. I mean, we were sitting here with yeah. big open questions, but maybe a year from now. I mean, it, it, but in any case, we're talking about uh, Mass Works infrastructure program. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they're using over on North Plain Street in Great Barrington mm -hmm. with the habitat stuff. They got uh, a pretty good amount of money to do the infrastructure over there. There's a rural development fund for towns under 7,000 in population. Mm -hmm. um, there's a real estate services technical assistance program. And again, these, these applications get fed into all these places and they, they review them. Um, so Mark, do you know whether the, for the one step, if the deadline's on June 5th, if we weren't to do the one step because we might miss that deadline, how about all of these others? Are do they have different deadlines for when? You well, I think I I to, them? I, the impression I got. I looked at. I looked at. A, they have an online seminar. We have an answer. Oh, okay. okay. So I, I, the towns have participated in the one stop program. Uh, right now, I've asked for one million dollars for the Tuckerman Bridge, one million dollars for one eighty three. There's a repair needed on that. We've gone after a couple others within that program. It's a one time, once a year. What you do is put in an expression of interest. What it does is it then generates, based on your expression of interest, which usually comes out in February, it says which programs would yours would most likely fit. It actually does not feed to the programs. You have to identify which programs you're going to go under. Sorry. By submitting the expression of interest, it actually would say, you put in and say, oh, we're developing this property. We're looking to put in 20 rental units. We're looking to do blah, blah, blah. They would say, you would fit under the following programs, and then right. you can apply for those programs. Right. Um, so if you do it, your Michael. Excuse me, but you do it yourself. I mean, they the applications. Yes, went. Uh, but you're going to need a lot of information. If so, for the Tucker, we had to put the design build plans, what stage we're at, you know, all types of information that you have to feed into it. So yeah. you have to be further far enough along. Yeah. Um, one of these. If not, what I would recommend is just what you talked about or, or the various planning grants to get us where the plan would get us enough information that we can then submit it into the larger programs. Gosh. Because you're not going to get in a larger program without doing that. They're going to look at benefit cost analysis. So that would go back to just what you guys were talking about. It's the cost of putting in a road, utilities, and the rest plus the cost of making them. this go. Right. So you're going to have to do that planning part first and identify that. Then we have an application. We have we can log in. And whether I'm working, I would whether I'd be working with a consultant who would then feed that information into it, or whether or not it's done in house. However, you're going to do it is do do you work? Um, do you does the town or you have consultants that you use to put the applications in? It depends on the application. So depending on, you know, if you're going after a dredging grant and a lot of it's going to be environmental issues or something, you're going to have to hire somebody to do the environmental. Mm -hmm. um, if it's, it depends on what you need. But 
I think if you were to get a planning grant, you were able to identify what's up there, you were able to identify your initial costs, the rest, and obviously you'd have an engineering like for the water and sewer who would then list out these. Getting yourself to at least 25% design of what you're going to do is where you're going to be at. My complaint grant would get you there, mm -hmm. would answer these questions about the BCAs and the rest, and then say, mm -hmm. okay, now you can apply. And depending on what information, now we would put in the expression of interest, then the program opens up, and then you say, I'll even go in because it's so old, but right now I can put in more. I, I can go in without applying just begin an application to mm. look at what one of what one of those would look like under the house because I haven't done one under the housing. Mm. This came out this one stop's only been in existence for the last four or five years. So uh -huh. they before you had to apply to each now you go to one stop, you put your expression uh, in yeah. and you <laughs> identify where you're gonna apply for the money. So what I like I said what I can do is I'll take a peek at what one of those looks like and what information but I'm Usually they want site plans, they want this. Right. Not not a hundred percent, but they're gonna you know, some of what you have there conceptually, which you'd have to you know narrow it down. So I'd say the next year to get ourselves in position for next year would be approaching those and exactly as you said, Randy, uh, go after trying to get a planning where they'll answer these initial ones and then tell us whether or not we can move on to the others because if your benefit to cost analysis is so far off, they're not even going to consider right, right, yeah. right. So, right. Well, they have a they have a calendar of events, as you know, yep. uh, that started very early in the year about an expression of interest, which was to give a kind of a general overview of where you're headed, and they could they could give you some feedback to that or direct you to certain places. Mm -hmm. And, and then later on, they had some online things where you could get on with somebody and ask questions. And all of those things have passed, those deadlines. And the only thing that's left is the June 5th mother load, which we're, oh. we're nowhere near. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, one stop is something that we could eventually, you know, work towards if we have our a little that's bit. We know more right. of what we want to do. Michael, if I could just ask you. Um, for example, the Mass Housing Partnership and the Mass uh, Housing cool stuff. Grants, which are basically planning, they're, te they're specific to affordable housing. Yeah. Um, and it sounded as if that would, that the services that they could provide us, they're very experienced in this area. Right. That, uh, and since it doesn't, neither one of them would cost us anything. We just have to be accepted. Um, I'd love to just figure out when the deadlines are for those to apply for the technical assistance. I don't right. think there's any deadlines. I think that you just you apply and they and they tell you whether you know they can make sure the Mass Housing one has a there's a grant and in order to put Mass out Housing a grant, is a grant. In order to put out a grant, they have to have a deadline for application, you have to have it in by a certain date, and then they award the X grants. I'm not sure about the other one if it's just a rolling technical assistance program, which other I've seen those too. Those are usually rolling. Mm -hmm. So that one might be something to look at as well as giving right now. The grants, I know they have to do the grants that way. It's procurement log and they have to have everybody has to have a fair shot to apply. So they hope they'll have a date and a deadline for the rest okay. of them. The technical assistance ones, like I said, are usually rolling. Shelly has promised me this rather long email with the facts, which hasn't come yet. Um, she said she was going to do it as of yesterday, but it will come. Um, but uh, I think that Shelly is a very, very good resource and combined with what you've been able to find, Mark. Um, yeah, I, thought I think I that no question we need, we need to, what we've learned is that we need a place to stand and we don't have a place to stand to make this decision about how to go forward. I thought I could send a link to, um, they have like an hour long uh, slide presentation that lays out all this stuff and, and oh. more depth. I can send Who that. Who does that? Um, uh, one stop. They, they have oh. quite a bit of information. Okay. And I could send a link on that if anybody wanted to look okay. at the slideshow. It looks like That's Liz it. is looking at it right now. No, I'm just looking for her name. That's for Shelly. <laughs> she was involved in our she thing was. a year she ago, spoke March. She to us, yeah. At that oh, oh, you're looking for Shelly under I Mass Housing it. Partnership? No, I just, just wanted to know how to spell her name. Oh, S H E. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a G. It's a very interesting it's a German last yes. name. G H O E R I N G. I think. So, um, okay. Well.
it's a start, as they say. Uh, Michaela, did, do you have anything you want to add? No, but I do. I will reach out to Jim and I'll try to think of some other people that I'm connected with through CDCSB in terms of a development, a possible development consultant in term, you know, someone to like help us. Are you on the CDC? Yeah. Oh, terrific. I yeah. know that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. What, what are they planning now? We're working on the Thornwood, getting the Thornwood oh. up and running. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's the like current project of the moment. As work, everybody as everybody know what that housing. one is. Everybody know what that one is. The that just, um, it's the yeah, housing. the thorn yeah, it's workforce housing and possible like rental space, community yeah. space. Um, yeah. And how are they financing it? Because they're not doing well. I believe it was a combination of uh, different grants and and um, the town of Great Barrington gave a certain amount of money through the preservation committee. Um, because first preference is given to people who work in Great Barrington to live, to live there. So they bought it from David Thorne mm -hmm. and his family that had been running it as an inn. Yeah, as an inn. <laughs> and, but they're going to, when, they, when you say workforce housing, that means it's individual rooms and baths? Individual rooms with small refrigerators in them, and then um, a shared kitchenette with in, like locked cabinets for each person. Um, so the kitchen is shared, but the rooms vary in terms of size and some have balconies, some don't, some have garden entries, some don't. So kind of all different levels. Are they assuming that it's each one's one person? One to two people. So like a, a couple, couple or an individual. Is there a time limit on length of stay or? Month to month. Month to month. Mm -hmm. and, and do they have a, a rental rate yet? They, we do. It's all different. Uh, it's laid out depending upon the room. So if you if you actually go to the website, you can see it. And I created a video like tour to walk through. Nice. So that's on the YouTube page now too. Okay. Uh, on YouTube, not on the website. It, they put it on the website. Aaron put it on the website. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Okay. Until I didn't know you were on that. Yeah, but it's great. great because they are so knowledgeable in there's so many of them on that that are so knowledgeable about and connected. So I'll put the reach out to see if I can do get some notes. Oh, okay. That'd be great. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, and um, I think they did that project, uh, the rental project that's down by the co-op. The, they've done uh windrush. Windflower. Or wind, no, windflower is construct. All right, all right. Yeah. Windrush is down near the senior. Near the. The southern part of uh, GP. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a bunch of projects that they've done. How long has CDC been around? It's been a long 30 time. years. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, Great Barrington has certainly been more active in affordable housing. Yeah. So hopefully we'll have some connections there that can help us. Thank you. Good. Terrific. Okay. Um, if no one else has anything else that uh, Liz may add. Liz, are you? Uh, well, it's it's quick. Um, it, what you wanted me to talk about? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I keep we're seeing our neighborhoods go. <laughs> Every time a house goes for sale on Church Street or Park Street or whatever, it's 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 going. I mean, one the prices have doubled pretty much in the last five years. Um, but we just saw the one on Church Street went up maybe a week ago for four ninety five, which. I swear, okay. four or five years ago would have been 250, 275 at tops. Um, and, I, you know, we don't know who's buying it. But the fact is, is that a lot of places on the street have been bought or on other streets are being bought by people as second homes or as short term rentals. And I just want to know how we can come up with some money or a backup plan so we can start buying these homes back. Um, because we want I want to keep our the, the stock of homes in town available yeah. Yeah. and you know we've watched the number of, of resident you know year-round residents decline and is there anything we can do how do we get funding to do that these you know these are i don't know the answers but it's my my real yeah. concern yeah. Um, i'm watching the, all these neighborhoods yeah. disappear yeah. the marketplace is changing the nature of the town yes that's true the physical plant doesn't hasn't changed much because people don't want it to mm -hmm. but the character of the population has changed dramatically as we've seen in our housing production plan 
it's kind of this weird thing of like mm -hmm. the town has totally changed, mm -hmm. but it looks the same. You know, and if you didn't have the data at your fingertips, you wouldn't know that it had changed, really. Well, you would if you go to town meeting, <laughs> because I went to town meeting and sat with an old friend and he looked around and went, do you know of anybody here? Mm -hmm. I mean, we knew we knew a few, but we were really surprised at the numbers of new people. And, that and we those aren't second people. homeowners, right? They can't come to that. They can't. Well, they can sit on the side. <laughs> I will say, hey, 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 I, hey. I it's a bad hey, it's true. thing. That's I mean, I, I do want to say, like, I really don't think that's a bad thing. I get a little nervous because I feel, and I know this is not your intention at all. No, I'm not putting it in. I'm just saying sometimes when people sit here and talk about it, there's a feeling of othering people that are coming into town, which I'm just like not comfortable with. And I know that's not your intention. No, I um, think. But I, but I, you know, so I, 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 but I hear you. And I think, you know, my personal feeling is that like, if we, if we want people here full time, we also have to include economic development in what we're doing. Because if we don't have economic development and there right. aren't the jobs mm -hmm. that pay people a decent wage, and I'm talking at least 70 to $80,000 a year, we can't, we're not going to have people here full time. And those are going to be people because we are a vacation town. Those are going to be people with second homes. And the thing is, is that like people will say, oh, well, you know, we do have those jobs. Those are police officers and teachers. And it's like, well, yeah, but those people, not everyone is qualified to do those things. Not everyone has the skills to do those things. Not everyone went to school to do those things. So until we have industry, well, we certainly need plumbers and electricians For and all sure. those things that For make sure. just as much as not, Absolutely. not more. Yeah. So but, like, how can we... But they can't buy a house. Yeah. So like, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, I think maybe this is a, you're 100% correct. This is such a concern. And how do we get creative and think outside the box that in a way that could... And and I don't like the othering. I think oh, I know. what I was missing at the meeting really was that I'm not seeing families. I'm not seeing younger yeah. people. It was yeah. a pretty old crowd. No, I, I, I totally oh. understand that. I totally I understand there. that. You were there. We're an old crowd. <laughs> Which is interesting, too, because I find as a person who has a young family, like, this is such an incredible place to raise a family. Yeah. And the public schools are amazing. And there's other school options that are amazing. And the resources, the grants given for play groups that are incredible. And I just feel like maybe it's also putting effort behind like some kind of campaign <laughs> to let people know that, you know? Yeah. I have to say as a, unfortunately as the grandmother, but um, there is a remarkable, <laughs> remarkable set of early childhood development. Amazing. Um, Amazing. That, I don't. I don't know where else you can go. Yeah. To to uh, for your child in ages zero to or to three or four, mm -hmm. and then at 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 three, every one of the schools has yeah um, early childhood. Oh, the, the play groups were great. Oh, amazing! Oh my god, <laughs> they were the lifeline. Yeah. That's They're where amazing. you made all your friends. Yeah. And, oh. and when you go to the play groups, oh uh, well. Michaela uh, knows, but if there, I'm surprised that there are as many people like you, yeah, who are there. Yeah, so sort of where people. are they yeah, hiding yeah. here? You go from town to town to follow them. <laughs> That's what we used to do. Do you think the school numbers will go up then? If these are little kids now, are they going to be in school mm -hmm. five years from now? I mean, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they might show up. You're planting roots. Yeah. Definitely, you're, you're planting. Definitely. You've got friends. You've yeah. got you know your children are growing up together. I, I just think that right now, part of what we're seeing is a systemic issue that I know was raised in higher ed seven years ago, eight years ago when I was there, which is like we're in a population dip because people my age are not having children. That's they're either choosing not to have children or they're having one child. And I have plenty of friends who are only having one child yeah. because of financial issues, because they're, they each, I mean, Joe and I carried a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, like ourselves, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and it's a, it's a criminal, <laughs> it's criminal. So I, I, I understand Are that. You get it. <laughs> Can our president leave you? Right. So, I mean, I think it's, we okay. paid ours, so, you know, we hustled, but it's, it's hard. It's really hard. Well, yeah. And it's really, if you have a child, you're taking on, I don't know, three, four hundred thousand dollar commitment. Yeah, I guess. And that depends on how you count, them. <laughs> that doesn't count college. It's right. more than that, because I was going to say college is going to be yeah. $100,000 when you right. get it. Which I really do think $100,000 a year is more than that. you're bringing up like a, a really great point. And I think we should keep... No, I love the campaign idea. Talking about this. I really love the campaign idea. And I do want to say that I've been thinking of it because Richmond, 
has on their YouTube channel, they took time to make a video about Richmond and about living in Richmond. Nice and video. Deval Patrick is on it because he has a house there talking about Richmond yeah. and what is offered. And I just think that's an interesting. And they don't really have a town center either. No, no. Do we have a town hall? I was shocked. The new one. The new, the new, one. The new town yeah. hall is really yeah. amazing. But I just, I, I just think it used that's... to be the post office. You know, yeah. You know, okay. They didn't have a town. Silly but... question. Do we have a YouTube channel? <laughs> In Stockbridge, no. This is what I mean. Like, I feel like we need to, if we want to recruit people to live here and families to live here, we need to tell the story of right. what that is and to live here and to like, and the amazing services that are provided. Michael, is there anybody but us that would take the initiative to get a YouTube channel and do some promotion for our town? Oh, I'll bet there's some filmmaker think, well, here. It's not that hard to Young set up. The, here you just have to make the, yeah. make the programming. Right. Yeah. No, but no, but some. Well, I think it really, it honestly, and not to throw them more work, but it, it it would fall under a chamber of commerce type of project, and it doesn't mean that you couldn't have people they couldn't outsource that and sort of sponsor oh. that. I'm not trying. To, I, I, this is a whole other meeting. Well, but yeah. anyway, this, these are just thoughts. Do we have a chamber of commerce. Yes, we, we do. do. Oh, we do. They actually, are in this building somewhere. Yes. Yes. Yeah. However, I wanted to say that Monument Mountain has a wonderful media program. Yeah. And they produce Ooh, a newscast cool. and 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 stuff over there. I happened to connect with them over something a while back, and uh, they might well have kids who could make a video for us. Oh yeah, cool. You talk about money around the school. Yeah, money around high school. Uh, they got equipment. They got a studio. You know, they got yep. kids who love doing it, and they got a great faculty advisor if he's still there. Like he brings like turkey sandwiches to everybody on production day. Well, also we you together. know Keith is a filmmaker too. <laughs> oh right. But the channel itself is easy to set up. Isn't yeah. it? Making, oh, yeah. making the programming. So it's just the video. And someone I know is also a television director. Yes, you know somebody like that. That's right. Anyway, just um, throw it out there. Nice idea. All right. Well, we have to take these ideas and make them happen. Yeah. Um, but I think that what I've learned from today is that we, the next step, I think, that we should focus on is finding a consultant, okay. whether it's called development consultant or uh, consultant. I'll do some digging. And, uh, and, and I think that should be the focus of our next meeting is yep. uh, I'll, I'll take on finding uh, through Shelley what's going on there. Well, okay. I'll look into a little bit more into grants if I can find them to, to, to help pay for those people because I got the impression that the state might have a program for for helping you in the early stages of these things. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have written to, uh, I guess it's Teresa, because there's four of us that are up for a nomination. Um, for and everybody wants to be reappointed. Yes. Yeah. I, I wrote. I wrote to her. I think the select board has that. <laughs> Pardon? I think the select board yeah. has that. Yes, we have, we have your response. And they vote in okay. June sometime. They, they'll, we'll vote at the second meeting in June because it's effective for July 1st. Right. Okay. Um, we'll, have, we'll have the appointment, and that's up to the select board. I don't know if anybody else at this point has put their name in for this committee. Hmm. We'll see. Um, there's one loose end. I was thinking at, uh, at one point I mentioned um, properties that might be available, and you nodded over to Jan, and I thought maybe you had some information about Town-owned land that's not in the wetlands, or yeah. Michael and I just spoke yesterday. Oh, okay, so it's He's pulled together uh, all of the town-owned property and uh, what might or might not have to drive around and look at it, or <laughs> no. I uh, think most of it is right on the maps. Most of our wetlands, yeah, yeah. they're up. They're mountain sides. You know, we have a lot of land around <laughs> Everett Lake. That's all within the watershed, and it's all protected and mm. can't be developed. Uh, we have quite a few pieces on on the mountains themselves, but. I told Jane, you got to look, you'll see the map. If there's no wetlands, just look for the topography mark, marks and you can see that it's basically- It's like this. <laughs> so- um, Is there, there anything- um, We, me and Mike Blade did not see, we saw one maybe, but for the most part, it's wetlands, open space conservation land that's protected like the watershed or mountain upland, what would be called upland conservation land on the mountainside. Okay. That's typically what we have. A lot of those, the lots that are in the area lower are owned by Laurel Hill or um, the Stockbridge Land Trust. Uh, mm -hmm, yeah. Is it that 
that has other areas of forested land that sits lower. But as far as the town, no, we most of ours is um, unsolved. It's wetland or upland conservation. Anything the the land next to our home it yeah. is in the uh, Stockbridge Land Trust and. Uh... People have been very, very generous to preserve open. There's been a big orientation by people who live here to give land to keep it as open, but it's it's denoted as only used for just open space. Yeah. Um, All right. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. One other thing. Uh, we have a legal bill from uh, town council for the uh, acquisition of the Morris land. Um, it's a it's a little it's a thousand dollars in change um could we get a motion to Can you tell me exactly how much so i can say it i will <laughs> yes i think i might i have a copy of it i move to authorize one thousand five hundred and fifty i mean sorry one thousand fifty seven dollars and fifty cents move to authorize that amount to pay town council for services rendered second second all those in favor bruce Hi, Bruce. Hi, Jan. Hi, Ranny. Hi, Liz. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mikhail. Thank you. Um, there is also uh, the question about that was raised last time about to looking into the dam that Mr. Forbes kept talking about and the water. And um, I talked to Steve Mack today, and he's he's somebody in his firm is going to go out and. Um, um, and look at it and see if there's anything. And if if so, if there's anything he feels that would be profitably done, he will give us a proposal. And on the title insurance issue, which came up last time when we took under advisement, yeah. I've talked to um, Donna. She got an estimate from a title insurance company for uh, like $4,000, but it was totally unclear as to what it would cover um, and whether um, I, I think it should remain under advisement until we figure out on the survey and if there are any other issues. Okay. Um, and I'm learning to type. <laughs> the, the, um, uh, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes here to see what else uh, we may not have. Uh, dealt with. I think I've mentioned it, but if, and we, I don't want to bring, go back into that discussion, but should we decide to do for sale housing, if that's the decision that we focus on, um, it's been highly recommended that we do some sort of marketing study as to how deep the market is. I, th I think we price. should, I think we should focus on the development consultant and moving forward. On no, I, 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 uh, I well, totally we have a realtor in our midst. If there we were do. 10 houses for $500,000 available, how long would it take to sell them? Depends on the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> depends on the property. It depends. We, well, it wouldn't take too long, but I don't know if that's who we're shooting for. 500000 I think, is not. But, you know, it's. I think that's not. I mean, so if, if we were to develop a property under the friendly 40B mm -hmm. and have an ownership, there are specific guidelines for how what you awesome. sell the house for. Mm -hmm. It has to be targeted to a certain so that someone who has an income of eighty percent of the AMI um, can afford it mm -hmm. while only spending thirty percent of their income on mm -hmm. housing. And mm -hmm. what's included in the cost of housing is defined to be not only the mortgage, the taxes. Utilities. Um, I don't know if utilities are in there. I know insurance, though. Insurance, yeah. title insurance, or not title insurance, but right. property right. insurance, mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'd have to back into that number of, and then the difference, presumably, between that and the 500, if that's what it costs to build, is got to be identified as grants from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right. There's a so. definite gap, and it wouldn't. Uh, five, uh, my sense is that five hundred thousand is higher than if we're if we're, if we're doing capital A housing. Five hundred thousand is too high. Yes, we're, we're looking at three hundred. You can only you'd have it would be defined. I mean, yeah, I mean it, there are guidelines. Right. So right. you 
But I think the guidelines would put us closer to 300 than to 500. Probably so what you're selling for. If, yeah, yeah. And I it's was all, just going that. Way. But it's also influenced by the um, uh, mortgage rates, and yeah, high, for sure. which are high right now. Yeah. Right. We, we're hopeful that things are going in another direction. But so it's it, it, it's a formula that has a sort of a loose cannon in the middle of it. It's mm. mortgage rates. So, yeah. um, but that's again part of what a development consultant who yes. has had experience yeah. doing for sale housing exactly. can tell us. Could tell us. Uh, sure. And I was just, as I said, very surprised at how negative Shelley was. Mm -hmm. I, I get why she is. I totally get it. And it, actually, MLS is just starting putting rentals on online. Really? We're gonna, yeah, we have to. Um, there are so many people who ask, and I don't know what the real reason was they did it, but it's coming on. So the MLS hadn't had rentals. We've never had rentals before. No, we're not trained to do rentals. And rentals are a very, very different animal. Oh, that's <laughs> it's not they're something that anybody... They're paying neck. Because they assume, don't make much money. Well, it's not even that. They assume that we are the person who's going to help them. And we're not, you know, or not after, once it's bought or once it's rented. Um, right. We're not the landlord. No. Yeah, and the rental fees for agents are no. pittance. I have to go now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. What do we do next dates? Yes, thank you. Uh, when do you want to meet again? Uh, when can we meet again? I'm going to be away from the 12th to the 26th. And I'm going to be... meet without me. Well, I may not be here. I'm, I'm on. It's essentially, I'm going to be on. Um, I don't know. I'm up in the air. All right. So when. Um, we could try to meet before the 12th. The reason I'd like to meet sooner rather than wait till the end of the month, and Jen, I'd like to, you to be here if we can, if we can have a kind of meeting. Okay. Because I think we should set that target to try to identify consultants. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, sooner rather. What about the 10th? That's Monday the 10th? Monday, Monday the 10th. The 10th. Or can you do that? I, I should be here. I, be here. I think I can. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Okay. And I'll try to move on my end of that. Okay. And if I'm not Monday, I'm June 10. Okay. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Okay. That works for everybody. Bruce, you okay, okay with that? Bruce? He's smiling. Bruce. <laughs> Bruce, what happened to you? Are you still there? He's frozen. He's been affected. He's been, down, he's been driving. I don't know where Thank he is. Thank you, now. guys. It's, well, he'll have to be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. I'll, I'll move to adjourn. Oh, yes. Please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Second to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, Bruce is good. Okay. Yeah, no, Bruce. You Bye, Jackie. Bruce, can Bye. you come up? And